Bitcoin mining is loud. Or is it? Or am I sitting on a running S19J Pro right now? Introducing the upstream data black box. Almost unbelievable. Lately, I've been messing with a few companies' different attempts at addressing the problem of excessive sound. And today, I've got in the warehouse what I think may stand as the silverback gorilla of noise solutions. At least in color scheme, if not physical mass when compared to the others. The Upstream Data Black Box. As I record this, I have yet to actually see the thing in action under my own conditions. I came across these guys at the Bitcoin 2022 conference and was blown away by their demo. I just got my own black box delivered this morning, and I guess the first and most notable thing about this thing is that it's big. And it's pretty Pretty heavy. It's not completely and unreasonably heavy. Bill Morrison and I had no problem picking it up and putting it in the back of my truck. But if you maybe have plans to get one of these things and put it in your basement to quietly heat your house up during the winter time, what a good idea. Just make sure you have a plan for physically moving it around. It's about 120 pounds and it's pretty big. Though it does come with handles on both sides. I have a forklift at the warehouse, so getting it back off my truck without help was no problem at the warehouse. Oops, I snagged some stuff under there. Next, I just had to get this box out of its box and wrestle it onto some wheels so I could take it my first impression. The way it works is clever and simple. It doesn't have any additional fans for ventilation, which was initially a pretty big surprise. It comes with this black foam divider, which you have to cut to size yourself since mini ASICs come in different sizes and orientations. And this little piece of foam creates a separation between the low pressure side, the cold side, and the high pressure side, the hot side. And since these sides are essentially sealed off from one another, the hot air has nowhere else to go but down and out. Okay, so this camera sees heat. And as you can see, on one side it's a lot hotter than the other. You can even see the heat from the cords that are plugged in. That's pretty sweet. So you can see the intake side is dark. And then if you go over to the exhaust side, it's just a glowing yellow. And even like the panel on the side of the box, that panel is glowing orange. And on this side, it's dark. That might make for a good thumbnail actually. That's cool. Yellow Inferno, just a furnace. This whole thing, all of the panels and all of everything. For contrast, this side, just the power cable. Because the path of the sound makes a couple of turns on its way and past some more sound dampening foam on the bottom on its way out, a huge amount of the sound is scattered and absorbed on the way. It's kind of like how a car muffler works. Both the intake and the exhaust of the box have these filters that pop open for servicing or replacing. These filters let a lot of air through and they're cleanable so you can reuse them. I'm not sure why you would need to filter the outgoing air other than maybe just another sound dampening curtain. But it'll be nice that when the intake does get dirty, I'll just flip around the direction of flow inside and put off doing any work until they're both dirty. If you look closely in there, you can see the adjustable divider between the intake and exhaust on the bottom where you can allow some of the hot air to circulate back through. That's so if it's a super cold winter month and this thing lives out in the garage or something, you can make it so that a bit of the hot air gets mixed into the intake rather than just pulling sub-zero temperature straight onto the chips. For an S19J Pro to run in there, it has to be on its side. I can't think of any reason why that would be a problem. There's no moving parts other than the fans and the hash boards are slotted in so they're supported from the top and the bottom. Upstream's website says the thermal design of this box can handle two S19s, up to 7,000 watts of power, and still keep up with the heat dissipation. If you look around the lip of the box, there's this compressible foam gasket, and then built into the lid, this is more high-density foam with their logo so nicely cut into it. So when you shut this thing, it's got clamps that squeeze down on that gasket to really seal it shut. So when you first receive this thing, there's no way into it. There's no port to feed power and data through. So I reached out to Upstream Data, and they said, you just gotta drill a hole in it. I'm gonna use this one and a half inch pad bit. Looking down into it from the top, there's a platform where the ASIC will sit, then basically a ledge that drops down and a path where the air will turn a couple of times before going out the vent. I decided to drill my hole for cables that would be under that first platform. This box is made from aluminum, which is a lot softer than steel, so you can just use a paddle bit or a hole saw to make this hole. The one that I used was super old and beat up and actually did a little bit more ripping than cutting. So this thing's made out of aluminum, and aluminum's really soft. It's almost as soft as like hard wood. So you can just use a regular steel bit and you'll be able to get through it pretty easy. This is where you find out that between the layers of aluminum, this box is something of a urethane foam sandwich. Great for insulation and sound dampening. 
<laughs> so after making my way through the sidewall of the box, I shoved my ethernet cord in, pushed the power cords through, and backfilled the hole with some high density expanding foam. And that pretty much sums up the preparation. Cut foam, cut a hole, plop in the miner. This box also comes with keys and has a lock built into the front latch. Upstream says it's completely waterproof and weatherproof. So in theory, you could just toss this in the backyard during the summertime. Then I would suggest that in the wintertime, this goes in the basement or garage, since it'll provide you with basically prepaid heating. Having a quiet way to run an S19 like this solves more than just the noise problem, for at least half the year anyway. If you run one of these in your basement during the winter months, the electricity that you're burning basically gets to be useful twice. Once to earn you bitcoins and decentralize the network, performing proof of work, and again because pretty much 100% of that power is converted straight into heat. Heat that you were going to pay to produce whether you were mining bitcoins or not. Sure, it's hard to think about that in the summertime, especially down here in Florida. But in the wintertime, if you've got 3,000 to 6,000 watts of heat just wafting out of this box and floating up the stairs into your main living space, it very much will cause your furnace to run less often to achieve the same level of comfort in your house. Normally, with Bitcoin mining, that kind of thing is simply unfeasible because they're just so loud, unless you're going to run an immersion setup. Speaking of loud, just to do a quick loudness check, I have my handy dandy decibel meter here. When I'm speaking, it's in the 80s. Actually, it's in the 80s. So about 80 decibels standing right next to a running S19J Pro. When I close this lid, seal it. That drops down to 57, 56, 54 if I take one step away. So between a 20 and 30 decibel drop, that is significant. 54 decibels is pretty close to the general ambient noise of my warehouse due to the neighbors or the AC in the offices or whatever. The internet says 50 decibels is the, about the volume of a quiet conversation, a quiet suburb, a quiet office, or a quiet refrigerator. I think the emphasis is on quiet. I should note that I'm not being paid to talk about this box. This is not a sponsored video. They did send me the box to mess with, but with no agreed upon terms about what I would say about it. I would imagine they know what they've got here and there really isn't a lot bad you can say about the thing. It is legitimately hard to believe just how quiet an S19 can run inside this box, but the price reflects that. I think they're asking over $2,000 for this box. They're actually asking $2,500 on their website for the industrial version of this box, the one I have here. But the Econo Alchemist, who's on the same email chain as me with the upstream guys, I'm just gonna assume that he works with them. He has created a free guide to building your own single S19 or dual S9 version of this thing out of a single four by eight sheet of whatever material you choose that he says can knock down the sound by 20 decibels. I'll put a link to that in the description. Wow. Jeez. Well, that's not worth doing.